I'm running late this morning. The weather's not too spicy. The COVID babies. Send them out of the classroom. Something happened that made me feel really disrespected. We had an eco-hero assembly this morning and the representative was so energetic. She got a bunch of students to come up to the stage to dance and act a scene. And I learned that one of my students is actually really good at dancing. He got me wanting to dance out there, but I was a little shy too. He was also hilarious when they were acting like they were saving starfish from burning in the sun. Thankfully though, it was recess right after the assembly, which is the perfect timing because it would have been impossible to transition them back into class. 10 hours of being on campus, check. Today was a very, very, very long day. Part of it is probably because I didn't get enough sleep. The entire weekend, I was spending time writing out my EdGPA lessons and commentary. I honestly forgot a lot of the things that happened today. Let's see. We had a fire drill for the kids. We didn't tell them about it again, and they were very fast at getting out. I guess I'll just share the highlights of my day. During independent reading time, one of my kids wanted to sit next to me while we both just did our work. Towards the end of the day, a different kid asked if I could make bracelets. I had no idea where he was going with it, but I just told him that I made this one and then he just asked if I can put together his bracelet that fell apart. <laughs> Since Thanksgiving is next week, I made a poster that says 26 reasons why my host teacher and I are thankful this year and it lists all the students and their characteristics that we love so much about them. It was pretty cute because after I put it up, everyone huddled over to the desk and I was trapped inside. The things that I wrote about them made them feel really good. A few of them would make comments like, I give hugs or ooh, I can persevere. So that was adorable to see. After school when all the kids left. I had my host teacher look over my EdTPA and see if there's any changes I should make. We spent two hours just looking over the standards and looking at the rubric. She said a lot of the stuff I already have is amazing. There were just a few adjustments that I should consider. So that will be my job tonight. I'm running late this morning. It's still 6 30 which is way before contracted hours but this is the time when my host teacher and I usually get to campus. Yesterday I was extremely tired because I was running on four hours of sleep so I woke up today thinking that it was a weekend. I feel a lot better though because yesterday I slept a little earlier than I anticipated but at the same time I feel horrible because I set deadlines for myself of when I wanted to submit my EdTPA. Yesterday I was supposed to finish everything for task one but I'm not even done with the commentary or scoring rubrics so hopefully I can get that done today because I still need to work on the entire math one too. My teacher's so cute. She got me chips and says, Julie, happy Tuesday. I hope they are spicy enough. If you didn't watch my first video on my student teacher letter when I first came, there was a crossword puzzle on the back side that says a list of things that I like, and spicy chips was one of them. It's a pretty good day so far. The kids have a math test soon, and everyone was focused for the reveal. During social studies, a lot of them were engaged and wanted to ask a bunch of questions. It was so funny because when my teacher went over mild weather, we were talking about salsa, and the options for salsa are mild, medium, and hot, so she really did that back to mild weather and one of our kids was talking about how mild weather means that it's not too hot and a few seconds later he accidentally slipped and said oh the weather's not too spicy my host teacher and i were chuckling about it our plc was pretty cool today we looked at student data to see how much growth they had from the beginning of the year to the end of first trimester and we set some goals for ourselves to see what kind of scores we would want by the end of second trimester we also played kickball today for pe and our kids are so competitive that they just end up yelling at each other the ed TPA is the worst part of student teaching. So far, I've spent over 25 hours writing three lesson plans, writing nine page commentary, and creating every material for it. And this is all just for the first task. I set some deadlines for myself since the submission date is in one month, and I am already three days behind. I just need two more questions to answer and then I can put it all together and submit it to WGU for feedback. I'm going to give all these lessons when we come back from Thanksgiving break too. My goal is to finish the math one on Friday of Thanksgiving break, so this break won't be a celebration for me. At least I won't be coming to school and I'll have more time to work on it though. This was their art today and some of them gave me theirs and one of them said my favorite student teacher and another one made this really cool raindrop thing.
Today was a good day for the students. It was a rainy day, so maybe that's why their energy is a little lower than it usually is. Our student who has really intense behaviors was so kind today. When someone shared the wrong answer, he said, it's okay, you can just try again next time. He was following directions really well and he was being respectful when he was talking to other people. Turns out he had a stomach ache and a headache, so that might have been a factor into why he wasn't as explosive today. There are some other kids who are starting to want constant attention from me too, and I'm a little worried that my host teacher might think that I'm just letting them do whatever they want, so I ended up having to sit next to the kids so that he wouldn't come to my desk. After school, there was a district grade level professional development meeting, and it was actually really, really helpful. Sometimes I I forget that our fourth graders right now are the COVID babies so their maturity level, their emotions, their writing skills, their math skills are all under standard expectations. The other fourth grade teachers had wonderful ideas but also shared the same struggles and it's nice to know that your class isn't the one that's only struggling. I was also walking back to my car with the other fourth grade teacher at my school and she's a teacher who's always willing to give out resources. She said after my student teaching ends I should reach out to the principal and ask if it's okay to observe other teachers and other grades grade levels at that school so I can expose myself to different teaching styles, classroom and behavior management, see how teachers structure everything. She also mentioned that since I'm such a familiar face at the school now, a lot of the teachers would be willing to let me see their classrooms, which is something I'll really consider because not only am I learning for myself, I'm building a list of strengths that I can talk about when I'm interviewed. Also, if I'm thrown into a random grade that's not third or fourth, I would be better equipped at managing and surviving through the year. Chances are they are afraid to try. They don't want to fail. And those kids that will want, start acting out in your class when you introduce something, a new concept that they think is going to be hard, watch how many times kids like that need to go see the nurse for a stomach ache or they start acting out so you send them out of the classroom because that behavior is avoidance. They don't want to do it and they find a way to do it so they don't have to feel stupid in their minds. I finally submitted task one of my EdTPA to WGU for review. I feel super accomplished and really relieved, but I have not looked into the math EdTPA at all and I really, really hope it doesn't take as long. That's going to be my entire plan for this break. I'm on a really, really tight time crunch because I'm trying to finish within a week but I might be going on a Yosemite trip this weekend. Having the deadline be really close has switched my brain to being really robotic and getting my stuff done so this is good but the only bad thing is that I haven't been able to focus as much during student teaching hours. I'm planning to take on a lot more responsibilities after I get everything submitted on December 14th. The next math chapter that we'll be working on is division two and the way they do it is so weird. I only know one division, but I don't even get this stuff and look at the rest of it. Another teacher came in this morning and we were talking about the meeting that we had with the district yesterday and she was making a comment about how there's a lot of new teachers and everyone was saying that they were doing like all these perfect things when in reality they probably weren't and it kind of made me scared because what if I want to share about what I'm doing and then I get judgment from others? Also another thing is since new teachers are on probation, they're saying to keep it quiet during those meetings and not share anything negative about the classroom like if I'm struggling with classroom management or if I'm struggling with understanding anything that that goes on with teaching. Kind of weird how the systems played out. The common corner's back and we had to teach them strategies of how to use it properly because last time we had it, it did not go well. We got new TVs. Look at that and that. We have this kid who is always disengaged unless there's a game at the end of the lesson and it's so hard just to get him to copy words off the screen. It sucks because he's so capable as a student, but he just chooses not to do his work. He'll put his head down, he'll put his hoodie on, and I'm really struggling to build intrinsic motivation for him. This kid really, really loves to be near me. So this morning, I was sitting right next to him. I said, if you can do 15 minutes of math with no interruptions, I'll let you use my keyboard protector. And that worked, but when it was social studies time he refused to do anything unless the activity is a game or art it is such a challenge to get him to work i got him to copy down a little bit but as you can see it's just a bunch of chicken scratch that he can't even read just so that he can get 30 seconds of drawing and going back and forth between those two 
Teaching is so hard because how do you build that kind of motivation for a student who's so particular in what he wants to do? I have an amazing relationship with him. He came in today and gave me this little bracelet that he made to match with him. So I have that relationship with him, but when it comes to academics, there's something missing. Something happened that made me feel really disrespected. When I was walking the students back to class from lunch, a lot of them were being really rowdy and weren't in their spot in line. I gave directions to them before they entered the class, but when when everyone came into the class, only two or three people got started on what they were supposed to do. There was a kid that was shouting across the room and throwing my teacher's book. And so I talked to him on the side and I was like, whose book does that belong to? It's the host teacher's, so why are you treating it like that? Afterwards, I was like, how would you feel if I just grabbed your necklace and I just threw it around the room? And he said, oh, I don't care because I know I'd get it back at the end of the day. Then I said, okay, but what if you ruined her book? She wouldn't get it back. Can you do better next time? Because I know you know how to behave. So that was happening. I was trying to work one-on-one -on -one with one student. And keep in mind that my host teacher was out of the room at this point and other students at other tables were talking. So I got everyone's attention and I was like, who's done with this assignment? Who's done with this one? Who's done with this one? They see my host teacher starting to come back and some of them are like, oh, she's coming, she's coming and end up looking like they're working. So in my head, I'm like, what? Like, even though I'm just a student teacher, I'm still another authority figure in the room. Another 11 hours on campus and barely leaving. It's 5.20 right now. I was expressing my concerns to my host teacher about what happened earlier, and we're thinking that after our Thanksgiving break, I will have to take on a lot more roles for teaching so that they can see me as a teacher instead of just another side teacher. And I'll be honest, I haven't been teaching as much as I should be because I've just been feeling overwhelmed with lesson planning for the NTPA. Since tomorrow is the last day before Thanksgiving break, I'm going to do a read aloud and then we'll do a crafts activity after. I also spent a very, very long time trying to decide what topic to teach for the math ed TPA. We're just going to follow the plans for the curriculum. So mine will be about division. I'm going to start my first lesson right when we get back from break. So I'm anticipating a lot of squirrely behavior when we come back. But luckily, I don't need to record for the math one. So we should be good. This will be the read aloud and the crafts activity. This is little bookmark. It's so cute. I'm hoping that the kids like it because some of them like to read and not a lot of them have bookmarks. I forgot to mention that one of the kids went to the garden during PE and got me a bag of tomatoes again, but also a whole stick of rosemary. Does they stick branch. It's so cute that they think to give this to me. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I can't cook. The students love Otis and the Scarecrow. I was asking a lot of questions throughout the read aloud and a lot of them had very thoughtful responses and added onto the discussion. One of them mentioned how the character had empathy for the other one. So cute that kids can understand these kind of concepts. We are working on the craft activity as you can see right here. <laughs> they're having so much fun and they're being very creative. One of them's making an Among Us character, corn and clover. We have this one with the tiny cute skull more Among Us and a star. I honestly wasn't sure how they would respond to making a bookmark because a lot of them don't read like physical books. I love seeing them be creative and getting excited for little things like this. Look at how cute some of the students' scarecrows turned out. This one has a bunch of soccer jerseys on it because he loves playing soccer. It's kind of funny because a lot of them suck at using scissors. Like they have horrible fine motor skills. A lot of them are coming up to me and asking me if I can cut it for them. Like, Miss Trin, I can't cut it. It's too small. I can't do this. 